Alter. Hello again, welcome back, and thank you for taking the time out of your day to watch Hello Good Game. Today, somehow, we're holding our mythic rank. We're still ranked uh, between 20 and 30, which is really cool. Today, we're playing Mono Red. I'm calling it the Ketchup Kings because, <laughs> well, you'll see why. This is an aggro based deck. It's very consistent because it's one color, much like the Mono White Life game that I just featured on the channel. So if you guys find any value within today's video, please don't hesitate to give it a thumbs up. It's a great way to help support the channel for free. You can also join our Patreon if you've got some extra dollary dues kicking around. With that being said, thank you again so much for your time and attention. Your support makes so many cool things possible within this community. Our 500,000 gem giveaway, free cash prize to monthly tournaments, brawl and artisan formats on MPG Melee, one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions with myself also coming with cash prizes, and every YouTube video, get, uh, YouTube video we give away $10 to Grey Viking Games as well. So just like the video, comment below, and uh, you'll have a chance to win that also. Let's jump into the deck list and look at some top mythic gameplay for you guys today. Best of one standard is the name of the game. 2.4 average mana value within the deck, 28 creatures and eight non-creatures. We do have 24 land as well, which is a little high for me personally, but it seems to work quite well within the deck. And of course, all of these colors are split towards the red variety. And that's really what helps make some of these aggro decks like the mono white life game very consistent because you're never looking for another color land. Um, and the curve is quite low, so you don't even need very many land. It, uh, it just makes for a really enjoyable play experience, especially if you're new to the game. So with that being said, um, you are looking to get out Embercleave. This is a six CMC artifact with flash. It costs one less to cast for each attack and creature we control, right? So if we want to get this out early, this means we want lots of attack and creatures, easy. And then when it enters play, it will automatically equip to one of our creatures and the equipped creature gets plus one, plus one has double strike and trample. We can re-equip it later on to a different creature for three mana at sorcery speed. We combo this with the, you know, one drop, two drop, three drop. This is our four drop type scenario. Uh, and of course, our three drop moving backwards through the equation. We'd like it to be Annex Harden in the Forge. And I know this is nothing new to many of you. A three toughness power equal to your devotion to red creature. Whenever it dies, it creates a one one red satyr creature token that cannot block. If the creature that died has a power of four or greater, you'll create two of those tokens instead. You can play your annexes on top of each other because the devotion will push them both above four and they will each create two while the one dies. So, you know, that's a great way to get four satyr tokens right out of the gate. My favorite two drop here is Robber of the Rich, a 2-2 with reach and haste whenever it attacks if defending player has more cards in their hand than you. Exile the top card of their library and you can cast that any turn that you've attacked with a rogue. We have Robber of the Rich. We also have Faceless Haven, which is all creature types. And my favorite one drop obviously is the Fervent Champion, a 1-1 with first strike and haste whenever it attacks another target attacking knight we control gets plus one plus zero till the end of turn. This can again be Faceless Haven because it's all creature types. Equip abilities that activate uh, onto the Fervent Champion will cost three less, which is great, so the cleave can go onto the champion for free. Moving away from that, we do have the Rimrock Knight, which is a knight which can receive the buff from the Fervent Champion, a 1-3 that cannot block, Boulder Rush at the Adventure with instant speed. Target creature gets plus two plus zero until the end of turn, so a little bit of extra damage there for us if we want. This is, you know, most readily put on our Fireblade Charger, a 1-1 with haste if it's equipped. When it dies, it deals damage equal to its power to any target. This is great if we use Boulder Rush on it. It's going to be a 3-1, deals 3 damage, and then when it dies, it gets to deal another 3 damage, uh, which is quite spectacular. So, branching out from there, we took a look at two 1-drops, we took a look at two 2-drops, two, two we took a look at our 3-drop, and we took a look at the cleave. That's all we want to do. Everything else is just kind of an added benefit for you here. We have removal within the deck, 4 copies of Frostbite for 1, Instant speed, two damage to target creature or planeswalker, three snow permanence. It deals three damage, which is great. That kills so many annoying things right now. Uh, Soaring Thought Thief, one of the uh, the primary there. A single Shatter Skull smashing, the hammer pass in tapped unless we pay three life. The smashing at sorcery speed for two plus X, dealing X damage divided as we choose among up to two creatures and our planeswalkers. If X is six or more, double down on that. 
two copies of Phoenix of Ash, a 2-2 with Flying and Haste. We can pump it by plus two, plus zero for three mana. We can replay it from our graveyard through the escape for four mana and three cards from uh, our graveyard into exile. And it will enter with the escape of a plus one, plus one counter on it, which is quite nice. Four copies of the Bone Crusher Giant, a 4-3, and whenever it's the target of a spell, two damage to that spell's controller, stomp at instant speed as the adventure for two mana. Damage can't be prevented. This turn stomp deals two damage to any target. Finally, we have a single copy of Torbrand, Thrain of Redfell, uh, or Thane of Redfell, a 2-4, and if a red source you control would deal damage to an opponent or permanent and opponent controls, it deals that much damage plus two instead. And uh, again, in that similar category of just endgame nukes, a single copy of the Goldspan Dragon. 4-4 four, four, Flying Haste, whenever it attacks or becomes a target of a spell, create a treasure token, and treasures you control will tap to add two mana instead of one, which is great. Uh, sacrifice, I should say, not tap. Three Havens, three Snow Mana will create a 4-3 that's all creature types with Vigilance. That's amazing. The 20 Snow Mountains and a single Castle Emberth to pump up the crowd. That's the list. You talked about the strategies and synergies to open up. Player one drop, player two drop, player annex, player cleave. Repeat, repeat, repeat. Something happens to your annex, you get lots of satyrs, play Torbrand, and then you attack. You also have evasion through Phoenix of Ash in the air. Stomp can deal reach damage or that chip damage, if you will, much like the Fireblade Charger. Goldspan Dragon is great, as well as the Phoenix. Uh, they both have flying, it should get around any blockers. Play your opponent's cards with Robert of the Rich. And uh, you know, if you have the mana to play the Knights, Play the knight instead of the boulder rush uh, it's always better to have the one drop creature have the two drop creature the three drop creature and then cleave uh, so if it comes down to playing a creature or boulder rush definitely play the creature uh right so thank you again for your time and attention i really appreciate your guys's uh support on the channel uh we're sitting at rank number 25 here which is you know so good uh for me i never really expected to make it this high consistently and we've been here now for four or five days just chilling which is incredible uh making new decks for you guys uh every day so check out those whether it's the free to play or competitive standard here uh we've got you covered we've also recently played some draft at brawl which was a lot of fun so uh you know big thank you to all of you Enjoy the gameplay footage, and we'll be back uh, with our wrap-up thoughts in just a few. Oakley Dokley. Let's get after it. We're on the play, which hurts. A little red on red crime. Oh no. Charger can defend against the champion. Even if it gets stomped, right? It kills the champion. Mono Red is a formidable deck right now, and you see it a lot. A lot of Mono Red, a lot of Mono White, a lot of Demir Yorion. Salta Yorion, in fact, as well. We're in a good spot. You know, they're not used to taking the turn off, and the Fireblade Charger makes them do this. Unless they just want to trade now, which is, you know, still acceptable, and then they get off the field and can progress later on, right? I feel like they should attack, we block, and then instead of dealing two damage with the charger, which we should have done, we just get the kill on the champion. And then they probably play, you know, a, a Rimrock Knight or something. A robber. Tempted to block, but I know it's the wrong play. They probably just stomp it. Yeah. And they hit us taking a land off the top? No, another robber. Frick off, Randy. That sucks. They're gonna beat us because of Robber of the Rich. They have Snowhaven as well. Giant. I'm assuming, or they play our robber. Which is kind of awkward because it has haste. they want it right they know the value in it and they get a phoenix too oh my lord does that ever hurt i would still play giant but robert's great it's so much card advantage and they get their charger too
pass our turn. Um, Haven can block. They have their Haven as well, though, right? So, wrong timer with that at best, even. Being on the draw in a mirror match is rough. Rough. <laughs> Don't you dare do this to me. Getting so many cards. They must have something to slay it. Right. It has to be a boulder rush. Oh, it's the cleave. Nice. Okay. Let's show ourselves out and <laughs> we're not gonna get the job done there. Well, we're on the draw again. Ouch. But at least this time. I have one drop, two drop, three drop. Mono white. Definitely hurts us as well. Luckily, we can stomp their Luminar Casperant. And they don't attack. Right. Okay. I'll allow it. We get another stomp off the top, which is pretty groovy. We just take this now. Um, you know, the sequencing on that doesn't matter. It's we would still take it before their attack phase. Or if they played a savior or Elsa, something like this. Another I have one of those two again. Maybe we get another two drop, we could double down. Well, this life gain is frustrating. Giant in play. I think we could attack and try to kill one of them. We'll leave it. We'll play defensively. That's much smarter. They get their third land. Here comes Maul of the Skyclaves. Which is really going to hurt us long term. Okay. That's a nice snag for us. The giant in play just kind of stacking that value. Hitting for four. No blocks down to 18. Oof. This could turn at any point. All they need is a, a Heliod, and I shouldn't even say the name out loud. Just about three. Okay. Let's just our Phoenix. Annex says attack with everyone. Maybe not the champion. They could double block and then sack the outset to protect the Valkyrie, stopping all eight of the damage. Here they lose both outsets. They're at 20 still, we're at 20. Our field is far superior. The orator's fine, up to 22. Ooh, that is actually really good. Wow, they're applying a lot of pressure here. Let's just get the big dogs in play. Ooh, 
towards the cleave when you need it, right? So this keeps them down from that 27 mark for the Righteous Valkyrie buff. They keep Hallowed Priest. They lose the Orator. Interesting. Robert can go in. Why not? Just as a chump walker if we need it. Things do come to that. But this is looking uh, fairly comfortable. Speaker. Too little, too late. I mean, it is good, but... Right, not good enough. Nope. Land goes. We just... We hit. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's too bad we couldn't play the Phoenix after the uh, token was made. That would be deadly. And Flash as well. Bingo, bango, bongo. And, um, you know, that's a nice win. Very decent win rate here. But uh, we'll play another match or two for sure. Finally, we get to go first, but we're playing against rank number six. Oh, no. Get nervous. I hope they're playing a creature deck. And at least we got to go first. That's pretty cool. More mono red. A lot of mono red out and about today. Let's play the trade game. See what else they've got. I just want to stomp so I can giant next turn. I like the giant. You know, having that in play is helpful. If we could top deck a cleave, we'd be in good shape. No, because this gets stomped. Okay, they probably played their giants. We can double Frostbite and then play Torbrand to hit for, um, 9, 10 damage. Uh, 5, 6, 11. Do they have another? I hope not. Oh, they do. Dang it. Now the Rimrock Knight can't attack, which is super sad. Two damage hurts here, but may as well get it in play. And maybe they overextend, right? So we've got a good set of attackers here. They're down to eight. We can't block, they just get to free hit us here. Oh, another Annex, that hurts. A lot. They're playing defensively, which is smart. Say go for it. They probably have removal in hand. Dang it! They've got frostbite. They're gonna kill our giant. Nice. So 
with no attacks. And here we get cleaved, probably. Don't you dare! I wish I had a Faceless Haven. Or an Annex. Oh no. Torbrine's our only blocker. Annex swings in on us. We have four attackers. They only have three defenders. If they attack, they go down to two defenders. And we would hit for four, which isn't enough. We would need to top deck a stomp or something. Or removal on one of their creatures. Awkward. One mana. One attacker. Which is all they can do. Nothing else makes sense. Unless they try to overwhelm us and go in with everything. But we have 14 life, so it's like a, a long ways to go. They're thinking about it. They might just keep them back. No attacks. We're chilling too. That fervent champion on their board state really hoses us. That first strike is just screwing us so bad. They have Faceless Haven. Lots of attackers. We only have three defenders. We could block the champion uh, with the charger for that first strike to kill Annex, though. If we needed. Or just deal that three damage to them. If we kill Annex, they're down to two blockers without the Faceless Haven. It's crazy how serious this match just got, right? Oh, nice! Two haste creatures, they go all in. Wow. That is dirty. That is so dirty. We could try to rob her and Embercleave off their library. Oh, but they have zero cards now, too, so Robert's not getting nothing. Sag. They don't want to overextend. The Phoenix should attack for sure every turn, shouldn't it? And then they should just play defensively. Interesting. What if we could Rimrock Knight Boulder Rush the Fireblade Charger? Or cleave it. Both of these are relatively good options, I think. Or just... Yeah, I don't even know. I think we need an Embercleave. We gotta get rid of the first strike. It's a land. It's a land! Oh, that land is probably the nail in the coffin here. We could have taken them down to three, but left them the first strike, which is super annoying with Torbrand in play. What if we top deck another charger and we didn't hit them with it? That would make me sad too. We 
and the phoenix can come back from the grave. They have lethal here, I'm sure. Like, it's gotta be so close for them. So we're getting hit for four, eight, um, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Oh no, this just doesn't work. still get minus three. Good game. Good game. Good game. Good game. Alrighty, we're back at it. We go first. That's a lot of land, man. That's a lot of land. Is it rogues? Is it cycling? Is it mono white? It's going to be mono white. We pass our turn in case it's a Luminar Gasparant. Oh, whoops. We should have killed the speaker first. Oops, 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 because they get a life in here. Idiot! Let's keep all the haste in our hands because we can like kind of flood it out on the field really quickly. We gave them that life. Daxos is a real piece of work. Poor Brand is like pretty sick here. It's for six. They need to block it. I'm sure they block with Alsat, sack the savior to give it life gain, or they just take it. That's really, really good for us. Really, really good for us. Lures in hand. Yikes. So that's going to be bad news. I think we just go kamikaze. Sometimes you just gotta push through. Our opponent plays first. Sag. We do have removal though, right? Frostbite. Rubber of the riches. We're gonna do the do. And the Goldsman Dragon if we can ramp into it. Interesting. Wouldn't mind an Annex. Wouldn't mind an Amber Cleave. Interesting. Robert can go out. I think we have the same amount, so there's no exile. We get the fourth land, which is almost the fifth. <laughs> which is almost the fifth. There it is. They probably have removal on the robber, so we still don't get the draw. Oh, there we go. We got them. Nice. Ha ha. Oh, what? One, two. Three. Oh, never mind. I thought we had it. We should have just played the giant there, maybe. I don't know. Creation path. They are ramping. 
Is it just called Gary Ramp, or do they take islands here? Yeah, they do. We are in trouble. They wipe us here, we lose. If not, we have a chance. Well, if not, we win. But pretty sure there's going to be an ultimatum, or we're just going to get wiped. I don't care about that at all. Well, like a little bit, I'll be honest, but... Remember that time we didn't cast Stomp? Uh-oh. Remember that time we didn't cast our stomp? Shoot. Nice. So that's game. Right. That's game. No extra turn. Gargoth is fine. We can top deck a stall. They hit odds, kill the dragon. But now they don't get to take the dragon. Not that it would, like, do us any good because Gargi. We just need that direct damage. Or a Rimrock Knight, I guess. Not that. Oh, and we were tapped already. Shoot. So they will gain life. It's just they throw. Good game. Cry. I hate this deck. I hate this deck. <laughs> we missed lethal there. Uh, it's just like a little bit of a... No, we should have stomped their face. But, you know, there could have been a negate there, and then we would have lost our giant in general. So who, who really knows these things? But... Uh, you know, I'm always left wondering, right? Alrighty, so, you know, we did make out with positive win rate. Uh, things are going good, 60-some percent isn't bad, especially when you're this high uh, within the rank, as long as we're not moving backwards, right? Below 50 is really where we want to uh, avoid going and staying above 60. Um, a couple tough matchups, right? And, you know, just some really, really powerful decks in the meta right now. Um, that can go either way. And this is one of them, right? We've got mono red, we've got mono white, we've got salt eye uh, ultimatum, right? Which is quite great um, as the most competitive right now. And we're even seeing uh, team your adventures dealing massive amounts of damage uh, quite quickly, which is terrifying as well. So let me know what you guys thought of the video and all that jazz, the channel, blah, 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 in the comments below. I really appreciate all of your guys' support, uh, whether it's the likes, the comments, uh, just your subscribing to help grow the channel, make it more, um, you know, of an in-house brand name that's, uh, you know, really appreciated. Uh, the financial support, I'm trying to get everybody moved on to Patreon because I get uh, the highest percentage there. So, you know, instead of you guys you're paying YouTube and paying Twitch, uh, you're paying Patreon a little bit, but most of it, uh, or more of it, at least, will go to me. So if you're not on Patreon yet, jump on there. And there's some pretty cool uh, uh, goodies that you can get by supporting me on that platform. Of course, we've got Into the AM, Grey Viking Games, uh, MTGA Assistant, then you can get in on all of these things that you're looking for today whether it be the Discord, uh, the Assistant, whatever, the tournaments, it's all going to be in the Linktree link right in the description, or you can easily Google Hello Good Game Linktree uh, to find that. Uh, yeah, so without any more rambling, thank you guys so much, honestly. Cheers. Have a great day. Uh, happy Easter to everybody celebrating, and we'll see you soon in the next video.